This is my house. I just sat down at the PC and opened the weather to find Microsoft had put an article in my feed and I knew quite quickly that I just had to talk about it. Clearly I must want YouTube to ban me. It was from the UK heavily left-leaning newspaper The Independent and titled Sorry woman, you're probably going to have to teach your man how to be a good boyfriend and it came with this picture. Yeah that one, the one of the man on a dog lead and I didn't edit that, they printed that. No, nothing sexist to see here. It starts by telling an anecdote. It's seven years ago and I'm having dinner with a group of friends. All of us are sharing stories about the men we're dating. One is frustrated because her boyfriend keeps leaving the toilet seat up. Oh no, of all the important issues on display. How dare he? But hang on, if you have to put it down, surely he has to lift it up every time then. Isn't that just equality? Why has he got to tailor the house to the woman's liking? Why is that the default position? What happened to equality in all of this? Another is angry because her partner spends too much time playing video games and one is concerned that her boyfriend might be a fascist. And I love how those are treated on a similar footing. The potential nasty and toilet seat guy. And what is the guy doing exactly? Is he hanging nasty flags in their house? Is he growing a tiny moustache? Did you just buy a Hugo Boss suit? What is he doing? Then the only one among us in a long-term relationship leans forward and whispers, Don't worry girls, you just need to train them. Oh, she just has to train the nasty out of him, does she? All of us turned to her in an instant and she began to explain. It transpired that the therapized, emotionally intelligent, tidy, considerate partner she'd had for three years had not been like that at all when she first met him. No, no. He was but a mere boy, an untrained puppy, in desperate need of some direction and he got it in droves. To some readers, especially male ones, this might sound offensive, condescending, patronizing, misandrist even. And now you mention it, yes. Yes, it does sound like all of those things. It sounds offensive, it sounds condescending, patronising and misandrist. And it sounds like that because those things are exactly what it is. This is an article that would get called outrageously sexist if a man was saying it about a woman. And I don't think for a second it would even get printed in The Independent or probably any newspaper in the UK. This kind of controlling behaviour from a man towards a woman would instead be called abusive. Instead, the kind of sexism towards men is normalised in national newspapers and on national TV. In America, The View were recently stupid enough to declare men to be useless, which is more than a little rich coming from The View. Maybe I'm missing the vital social role that Whoopi Goldberg provides to America. The women in this story think they have to teach men to be good people, but they can't even teach themselves to be good people. The first thing they should have learned is not to discuss their personal relationships with a group of friends and acquaintances or write articles about them in national newspapers. It's a pretty basic betrayal of trust. The issue of the toilet seat, every time she has to put it down he has to raise it up. But such is this woman's arrogance, she thinks he has to change to suit her needs but not vice versa, never vice versa. The women in this story go in with the assumption that they're always right and their friends validate and reinforce that assumption for them. For the guy playing video games, maybe that's how he de-stresses. Maybe that's what he needs to be happy. Who are you to judge that is unhealthy or in need of you correcting it? So what is the factual basis for a statement that women have to teach men to be better people? It's this, quote, Almost every straight woman I know has had at least one experience with a man where they felt like they left him better off than when they arrived. So her entire factual basis for this article is anecdotal evidence of feelings of some women that she says she knows. She felt that was strong enough to write an entire article in a national newspaper about it and the paper thought it was strong enough to print. What did the men learn from these women exactly? Maybe they encouraged him to go to therapy. Maybe they taught him to be more emotionally available or finally learn how to cook. Whatever it is, the point is that they passed on myriad essential tools out of the goodness of their own hearts to help build and better the men they were with. Yes, the women are trying to coerce their male partners into doing what the women want. But it's just out of the goodness of their own hearts. 
if you teach him how to cook so he can cook for you. I would hardly describe that as out of the goodness of your heart. How would you women feel about a group of men talking openly about how they need to quote, train women so that the women know how to cook for them or be more fun in bed or exercise and then have the men say that they're just improving the women out of the goodness of their hearts. So ladies, welcome to equality. If a guy tries to manipulate you and change you into a person that serves his needs better, maybe he thinks you spend too much time on your phone or not enough time doing naughty things with him in bed or wants you just to not share personal details of your relationship with your friends and acquaintances. Consider yourself lucky. He's just doing it out of the goodness of his heart, I'm sure. In relationship, there do maybe have to be some concessions to your partner. All humans are individuals with individual likes and dislikes and it may be a nice thing to do to give your partner things that they like. But these women seem to have decided that if the man likes something and the woman doesn't, it's the man that has to change. So what have these women changed or learned exactly? The men I've been with have taught me plenty of things, like how to spend an entire day surviving without really ever having to lift a finger, or how to string someone along for months on end while secretly sleeping with someone else. And self-sabotage is a skill too, you know. It's just so brazenly and openly sexist and hateful towards men, and the author seems actively proud of it. And the guy you thought you were involved with was getting on with someone else, was he? Oh no, I wonder why, you seem so nice. The injustice of all this is, as Christie says, that the men absorb this education and then bring it into their next relationship, passing it off as their own for their next girlfriend. What do we get in return? It might not sound romantic, but in every relationship, there is some sort of transaction at play. Christie's tactic for overcoming this social injustice is to marry up, in terms of both age and finances. And there we go. The way a lot of women will talk about relationships is with dollar signs visible in their eyes. And yet, I think we would have a term for people that trade affection and intimacy for money. A lot of women make it frankly very difficult to like them. Maybe the value you could have got is in trying to learn something from the men you were with as well and taking that into future relationships. And in doing so, you could have possibly avoided turning into an awful harpy. And The Independent has form on this one, like in this article, also from them, in 2019, titled Lack of Economically Attractive Men to Blame for Decline in Marriage Rates, Study Suggests. And in terms of what makes a woman unappealing to me personally, a woman using the term economically unattractive to describe men is probably ugly enough to make me shun a hot girl like she has leprosy. And here's the thing. The maths are not adding up. Because ladies, if you're going to demand that there can be no gender pay gap between men and women, and you're also going to demand that male partners at the same time have to earn more money than you do, and you're also going to demand positive discrimination in favour of women, where do you imagine the male partners are going to come from that you are looking for? Because on average wages, you're already going to have shut the door on at least half of all the men, aren't you? And that's before you start also demanding that he must look like an underwear model, be over six foot tall and hung like a marrow. So if you're wondering where your male partner is that fits your criteria, there isn't going to be one. And that's the way you made it. Enjoy the cats. I'm getting from this that these women themselves are not willing to learn anything to better suit their partners or even meet them part way. The one thing that could have maybe made this article in any way acceptable to me is if it was released on April the 1st. If the author of this article is not single after a man reads what she's written, then she frankly really deserves to be. Fuck. Jesus. Hurry, right, somebody call the ambulance. Call 911. Don't worry, miss. They're gonna get help. Please, we need an ambulance now. A woman has been stung on the beach. Something about a giant jumbo jellyfish. Never rub another man's rhubarb.